seeing people as substandard in the eyes of God gives permission to diminish personhood and promotes stereotypes and supports violence. It is the same reality for whoever falls under the banner of other, where the power is vested in an opposing dominant social norm. In my lifetime, I have watched this reality manifest for African Americans, for women, for same gender loving people. We are watching and experiencing the exportation of this kind of hatred to Uganda, to Malawi, where people are being encouraged to hate and kill gay people, same gender loving people, and the folks who are giving them the wherewithal to do this are exporting an understanding of God that defends this kind of apparent behavior. Much of the hatred and permission to do violence against these groups is galvanized by a God view that suggests that whatever I hate, God must hate also. René Girard, the French philosopher, suggests in his theory of acquisitive mimesis, this example of human nature. An example from common experience involves two small children. One child notices a certain toy that had gone unnoticed by both children until that point. When the first child notices the toy and makes an effort to acquire it and play with it, the second child sees this process and mimesis compels the child to also desire the toy. Conflict results as both children now desire the same object. Girard's theory explains that had the first child not engaged the initial acquisitive behaviors for the toy, the second child would most likely not have desired the toy and conflict would not have evolved. However, since all human life is based around necessary acquisitions, as well as unnecessary acquisitions, conflict must also always occur, since this is a core human trait. Whenever one person sees another person attempting to acquire some object, those around him or her begin to desire that object and attempt to acquire it. However, this becomes particularly insidious when the thing, when the object is favor with God. Fundamentalism, this is the definition. The definition of religion gone bad. So I'd like to suggest that we all take a look at the definition of the word paradise in post 9-11. Paradise shows up in most of our faith traditions. And paradise is described in the Judeo-Christian tradition as the lion lying down with the lamb, the predator lying down with the prey. And can I say to you today, ebonically, that ain't natural. In order for this to happen, the lion must surrender some of its role as a predator, and the lamb some of its role as a victim. It is not natural. It is, in fact, divine. And divine work is the work that we, post 9-11, are called to do. God bless you.